Welcome back, fellow coders. This is lesson seven of our 10 part Learn Swift Quick series. In this lesson, we're going to learn what is an array and how do we use an array. So what is an array? It's defined as an ordered random access collection used to organize your, your app's data. Specifically, you use an array type to hold elements of a single type. And we call that the array's element type. Also, an array can store any kind of elements, be it integers, strings, or classes. Okay, so the first example I'm going to show you here, as soon as I open this up a little bit. is the format of uh, an integer array, okay? And that looks something like this. Okay. And as you can see, Swift inferred that these were integers. This particular very uh, constant are variables. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is an array that uses the string type. And that looks something like this. Clear your constant. Okay, so these are your integer. This is an integer array, and this is a string array. Okay, so now that you know how to create an integer array and you know how to create a string array, what can you do with them? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to access the value in an array. And we're going to do that with the for in loop, which we learned a couple lessons ago. And that looks something like this. For street equals, or in this case, this is a for in loop, for in streets lived okay we'll say print I lived on backslash Parentheses. Strict. Okay. 
okay. So I took, what we did is we took this constant from here and we attached it to this string. So when I told it to print, I lived on and I said, I put this string in here that's already attached to this array. And this is your result. Down here. So that's how you access values in an array using the for in loop. Okay. Now we're going to check the elements, how many elements there are in an array, and we're going to count the elements in an array. And you do that like this. Start this with um, something else we've already learned: the if statement. And it looks like this: if ages is empty, okay. print. figure out we're going to do a count so we're going to say ages dot count hi that's how many of their ages the result. I know five of their ages. Okay, because there's one, two, three, four, five. It says if ages is empty, if this constant is empty and it's not, so you're not going to do this, you're going to do the else, which is I, which is this, you're going to do the count. I know five of their ages. Okay, I can, I can, you know, split this count needs. Okay, I can put another one in and it go to six. So that put another one in. There you go. So we got the uh, so we learned how to access the value in the array. We also learned how to check the L, how many elements were in the array, okay, and what elements are in the array. So, we got the application to uh, print out this condition, but what about this one? What if it was empty? What do you do? So let's empty this out and see what that turns out. Oh, we got an error. So let's see what it says. Empty collection literal requires an explicit type. Let ages. Okay. I can do that. 
So we go back up here. And we will take this and replace it with this. And we'll say any object. We'll put an equal sign there. And the end result, I don't know their ages. And that's the first condition. Okay. So what if we want to add something to this array? Or to an array. So I'm going to start a new array. We'll call it siblings. So now we have a new array called Char, Liz, and Brian. But what if we wanted to add uh, a name in there, a sibling? We would do it with the append command, the append keyword. And that would look like this. Siblings dot append. Now, I don't want to do that one yet. That's next. Siblings dot append. OK. And I'll say fill. And that adds fill to our array. So that. But what if I wanted to do more than one? You would do it like this. Let's say siblings. Dot. Now I can use that. Contents of. And we just added two more to the array. Okay. So now, what if we want to remove a value? We do it like this. Siblings dot remove and you would count which one. Don't forget you count from zero, not one. So I'm gonna say three. Let's see, zero, one, two, I think it's four is three there. Let's see. Yep, and that removes him from the array. So if I were to print the array, you would see that he's no longer in the array like he was there. Okay. You can also use the first and last keywords to remove. So I'll say siblings dot remove last. And that removes Lena from the array.
So if I say print siblings, you see she's no longer in here, right? So that concludes lesson seven of arrays. Lesson eight tomorrow will be about functions. So I know you're looking forward to that. Until then, have a good rest of your day.